All right. Let's warm up the voice. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to my little studio space in London. Um, it may seem like I've been out of the country for a long time, but that's not true. I've been in London uh, for a long time, uh, editing, planning, doing all sorts of stuff for uh, the upcoming seven, eight months or so. Um, so I've been busy, buried away in my desk, just uh, planning all sorts of stuff, which I can't wait to share about. Little teaser on it, it's just a lot of travel and uh, a lot of personal projects and ideas that I've been wanting to work on for a long time. So um, yeah, it's going to be some cool destinations coming. But for this particular video, uh, I just wanted to kind of wrap up my Singapore and Malaysia content. So as you all know, uh, we went to Singapore and Malaysia um, in July. And uh, we spent just a couple of weeks there. Um, most of that was centered around Penang uh, in Malaysia. So that was awesome. We were getting loads of great shots. Um, but for the rest of the trip, I kind of focused a lot on photography rather than uh, making vlogs. It was more just a way to sort of get myself back into just the photography aspect of things. So I didn't really vlog much for uh, Kuala Lumpur or Singapore. I did film some things, but when it came to editing, it didn't really go down any sort of direction. Um, so what I want to share with you today is my editing of some photos uh, from that trip and uh, also just to clarify on a few things that a lot of people are always questioning about and that is what is the difference between Urban Chrome 1 and Urban Chrome 2. Those are of course my Lightroom presets that are available uh, with the link in the description. Uh, so I'll go through and uh, share some differences between the two. They are by no means uh, replacements to each other. They serve different purposes. So Urban Chrome 2 Urban Chrome 2 uh, does not replace Urban Chrome 1. They are um, in complement to each other. Um, there's just differences on the sort of style of shots that they feature. So we're gonna go straight into Lightroom, run through some of the editing. And before anyone asks about this screen, because it always gets asked about when it's featured in a video, uh, this is the ViewSonic VP3268 4K. Um, it's a display that I've been using for about a year now. Uh, I really love it. It's got an anti-glare display, which is kind of hard to come by sometimes. Uh, it's got incredibly thin bezels. It's 4K obviously, uh, it's 32 inches and um, it just produces great color depth uh, and it also can produce a 10-bit um, color if you have a good signal for that. So that's great when I'm playing PS4. And just another word on some other technical aspects because I'm testing out a few things as usual. Um, so the setup we got here is I'm filming into the GH5, uh, but I'm also testing the audio. Uh, as you know, I've been wanting to improve my audio for quite some time. So I'm now running through a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3, which is right in front of me via the Rode NTG4 Plus um, microphone. And uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's providing some good quality audio. Uh, the nice thing about this is the noise floor is ridiculously low. So hopefully there's no like hiss and background and all sorts going on. Anyway, right, I'm rambling away. Uh, let's jump into Lightroom and uh, go through how I'm editing some of my photos uh, from Singapore and Malaysia. And uh, yeah, all right, in we go. All right, so we're now in Adobe Lightroom and I've got some images here that I've already rated and uh, got them ready for this tutorial. So I'm gonna run through some of these and I'm gonna show how some of the presets work and uh, how they differ between them. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna change into our develop window and uh, we have our images here. And you'll first notice that when you get the presets, there are a variety of different sort of collections within there. So we have the urban set and we got uh, urban volume one and then we have Urban Volume 1 for Fujifilm and then for Auto. Um, so there are some specific ones in there for Fujifilm and they just set the uh, correct picture profiles and film simulation from Fujifilm cameras. This is uh, Volume 1. We got this image here from Singapore in the um, Gardens by the Bay, uh, which is an amazing place, by the way. Uh, it's really worth going to. When we just hover over the presets, you'll see how they change. These are specific to certain environments. Now, some images, such as this one, can benefit from all of those, but other images aren't so lucky that uh, every preset can work with it. So I'll run through um, how some of these work. So I can either just do like a one-click preset, um, and for this particular image, I'm quite liking how Cityscape Pop uh, 1 is looking. So I just click that, that applies a load of presets, and then I can go in and I can manually address, so I can see that the highlights are pretty blown out here, and there's not a lot I can do about that. It wasn't overcast morning. Um, and I can adjust everything else within my image. And you can see that there are um, all sorts of different color styles and other things that are applied from this preset. This particular image doesn't really have much um, going, like there's, there's not a lot 
going with it. Um, so I'm not going to spend too long looking over this. So from the same environment, we've got this image here. Um, and again, what I generally do is I'll go through and I'll browse through how the different presets will look. Uh, and again, we're sticking with volume one for now. And uh, you'll see that there is a stark difference between each um, sort of look as such. Uh, and again, these have been tailored and designed and produced over the past few years or so of, of traveling through Asia quite extensively. So for this particular image, um, if I was to go for that same cityscape pop one, you can see it's much darker and much more subdued. There's a little bit more work that needs to be done with that. Um, or I can look through some of these earlier ones. And I think one that I actually really like is Chrome One. So it's kind of got some some darkened blacks and shadows um, and some sort of contrast in the highlights. And uh, let's just bring up the shadows a little bit more. Let's bring up the exposure and then drop the highlights down. And yeah, let's maybe decrease the, the contrast, which kind of gives a little bit of a, an extra sharpening. Um, so it just shows a bit more detail. And if we just toggle before, and after. So you can see that with that, um, I've kind of gone and created a very quick edit, um, but something that I'm pleased with and something that will be consistent across um, my other shots, because of course, um, I can mimic these styles throughout multiple images. Let's jump onto another one. This is from a Hawker Center um, in Singapore. And of course, it's very dark, um, but we've still got some bright neon lights. And uh, this is amazing food, by the way. Um, if you do happen to go here, it's the equivalent of like I don't know, two pounds. So that's like what, three US dollars um, for really good food. <laughs> and uh, you know it's gonna be good when there's a queue there. So you can see these are how volume one look um, for this particular image. But volume two was created with a direction more towards some of these uh, darkened uh, shots and playing more with the light contrast. So if we open up volume two, and again, sticking with the Fujifilm ones, we can see some very different styles that come in here. Um, so we've got the cine night options uh, and these sort of play with going through cooler and darker shadows and really sort of maintaining those highlights but bringing the shadows down. Um, then we have some control contrast. These are more for some of the daylight options, um, some faded options. Then we have some harsh shade. Again, as the name suggests, this is more for the strong sunlight. Then we've got a night candy. This is uh, very much for an, a night scene, brings up some of the candy colors. Night pop, which is very color contrast based. Um, again, bringing down the shadows. This one is incredibly saturated, but is great for those real urban Asian neon night shots. <laughs> for this particular one, uh, I think I'm actually gonna stick with I'm going to go for Cine Night 5. Now, if you've seen this on my Instagram, I actually edited it slightly different, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to do it with this one. So I'm going to bring down the highlights. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to raise up the highlights slightly so you can see it's sort of brightening this area in here. And I could raise up the shadows if I wanted, but I'm going to raise it only a tiny amount, and then I'm going to drop the black. So it's kind of going to bring those really dark areas of the shadows down. Increase the whites just for that extra little contrast pop. Uh, I'm also going to adjust the temperature slightly just to bring a little bit warmer, uh, just a tiny bit there. Then I'm going to increase the uh, saturation on the blues slightly and slightly on the greens as well. And if I drop the luminance on the blues, you should see this area and adjust down or I can raise it up. I think it Potentially looks better raised up. There's a little bit of pops of colors here and there. Of course, the main thing that I do on pretty much all of my images is I adjust the, the verticals and the uh, the horizontal lines to make sure that they are perspectively correct. Do all sorts of adjustments. And I'm being quite, quite uh, quick with this just because I want to run through the different edit styles that I have. Um, you can see it adds in some grain and just really sort of adds a, uh, a stylistic look to this. So if we can go back to the before and then the after, um, and I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, I'm actually now gonna do Command Shift C to copy all of these settings, uh, including the white balance and uh, sharpening and everything except transform, don't need that. Uh, yep, that's pretty much everything. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go over to the next image, which is this one. And I'm now gonna paste that over those images. And you can see that's now brought the consistency between those two scenes 
uh, that are at the same place. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick little adjustment. I can bring down the exposure slightly, bring it down and just warm the image up ever so slightly. There we go. So we've got before and after. So you can see volume two really suits for those, uh, those nighttime kind of dark with some harsh bright lights um, fairly easily. So this is a Again, a, a different image we're caught between night and uh, daytime. So we've got the, the sun setting, uh, we've got some haziness to the image, and of course, this is the Manara Tower in Kuala Lumpur. So let's have a browse through some of the presets. Uh, so I'm again looking through volume two at the moment, and I can see some various different styles, and I just generally cycle through all of them until I find one that's kind of catching my attention and, and looking great. Right, so that's volume two. Let's have a look through volume one. Cityscape Pop 4 is one of my favorites, especially on daytime scenes. It really brings out great detail in the buildings um, and sort of office towers. Uh, not quite for this particular shot. So I'm gonna go for volume two. I'm gonna go for Static Pop 2. And now we can go and tweak a little bit further. So I need to bring down the highlights, drop down the shadow slightly, just warm up the image ever so slightly with the white balance. And of course, because I shot this in RAW, I have complete control over everything from the camera, uh, so you can readjust those things. If you shot with JPEG, they'll still work, um, but you may just be a little bit more restricted on what you can do with your edits. Uh, I'm going to click on this option here, and I can then select certain areas of the image, and I can just drag it up to increase the saturation. I know that I want to bring down some of these blues, because if I raise them, uh, actually, that's kind of cool. Could raise them a little bit and this definitely needs a little bit of sharpening and again if we use the backslash we can do before and after um, so i think this definitely needs a lot more work um, and it's always hard when you're doing these tutorials to really focus on what you're saying but also what you're doing i think this image in particular would need uh, quite a lot more work so i'm going to move on to the next one um, for the sake of keeping this video shorter um, so let's jump to this view here so this is uh, from the same building uh, but we're looking off to the right now so you can see the uh, the chrome set at the top um, have a very distinct color styling to them uh, so from before and then after um, really liking the way chrome 4 is looking for this one this image in particular is a little bit underexposed so i will need to raise that up all right so we've come into volume two and i've just found static pop 2 looks great on this one uh, now, as I said, this image is kind of underexposed at the moment. So I'm going to show you what we've got here in the auto sections. So in the Urban Chrome auto ones, uh, if we go down to Static Pop 2 auto exposure, you'll see what it's attempting to do is correct the image so that it's at the right exposure um, across the board. Now, in some cases, it works perfectly. Other cases, it still needs a little bit of an adjustment. But you can see from before, where it's fairly dark, to the auto here, uh, it's just brightened it up slightly. And we can then just go and tweak the exposure and just drop it down so that it kind of fits nicer. So this is definitely a set for those who aren't quite as comfortable editing in Lightroom, um, but they can still get the details and the colors um, without manipulating too much. But bear in mind, you may still need to adjust the exposure afterwards. Sometimes it works perfectly, um, other times not so much. I'm actually just gonna reset that back to zero and then go through the manual ones again and then i'm just going to drag up the exposure slightly and then drop the highlights down raise the blacks ever so slightly and i am fairly happy with that um, as a quick edit of just a standard looking uh shot all right let's now jump on to some night shots with the neon so this particular area in chinatown uh, really caught my attention so we've got this huge neon light here we've got all sorts of street food activity people walking around and there's a lot going on so i'm going to demonstrate with volume one uh, so we have the neon set um, so these sort of bring down the shadows without losing too much um, in the darkness and then maintain the highlights so that they're not as you see blown out and uh, going a little bit crazy so that's uh, in volume one the neon set but if we go into volume two uh, this is where I emphasized more of the nighttime uh, style. So we've got the Cine Nights, uh, really liking how these are looking. And uh, you can see it's just adjusting color temperatures for some of the colors in here. Uh, and if we go to some of the Night Pop, 
drastically different styles uh, across the board there. I'm going to stick with the Cine. Yeah, I think Cine Night 1 just holds a little bit more detail, so I'm going to go from there. You'll see if I drop down the highlights, it, it brings more of the detail back here, but sometimes you do kind of want to just blow them a little bit just to just to emphasize the brightness. Um, I could raise the shadows and then drop the blacks and you'll see that that only really affects the lowest parts of the shadow, so the very darkest areas. Just do some little tweaks there, make the color temperature much colder and you can see it brings out that sort of blue and contrast between the red going on there. And uh, increase the vibrance ever so slightly in the saturation, a little bit more of the clarity to add in some grit and contrast. And I am pretty happy with that. Um, so I'm going to copy those. Yep. Go across to my next image, which is in the same scene, and paste those across. And you can see then I only need to do a few little adjustments on the shadows and maybe bring in the exposure ever so slightly. And the key thing with this one is the verticals definitely need fixing. So that's now much straighter. Um, and just very much more pleasing. You see that's kind of a little bit skewer and that's much better. And yeah, that is a quick run through of a lot of the images um, from Singapore and Malaysia. So to thank you guys for supporting this channel over all this time, um, I have a little discount for you which has been running uh, ever since I've had these presets going and that is if you subscribe to my email list, you can get 40% off of the uh, volume one set or of the volume one and two combo set. Um, so it's just a case of signing up here and then you will automatically get an email with a discount code um, that you can then go and uh, get those presets for a significantly cheaper price. Uh, it's just my little way of thanking you guys specifically because you come from the channel um, rather than just other people who are looking for Lightroom presets. So that hopefully concludes the uh, comparison between Volume 1 and Volume 2 of the Urban Chrome presets. Um, as you can see, Volume 2 is not a replacement or an upgrade to Volume 1. They both complement each other um, and they offer different styles for different scenarios and different images. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel to catch up with where I'm heading next. So I've got uh, a huge amount of travel coming up over the next seven months. I've been spending a lot of time on Google Flights and in spreadsheets, planning all sorts and budgeting and um, just trying to work out how everything sort of fits together. So I hope you enjoy those, keep an eye out for them. Uh, click the little bell icon if you haven't got that on your subscriptions uh, and you'll get notified of them. And I will see you in the next video. All right, thanks for watching everyone. Catch you later, bye bye.